to box or not to box. There's two ways to make this little pouch. You can leave it flat like this one, or you can turn it into a little cube by boxing the corners. For the outer fabric, I'm using a quilting cotton from Art Gallery Fabrics. I'm cutting a piece that's 14 by 24 centimeters, but you can easily make it a little bit wider or longer. I start with a piece of lining that's the same size as the outer fabric, but then I trim a little bit off the bottom. By doing this, you prevent the lining from bunching up inside the finished pouch. I'm going to trim off part of the self edge and then um, cut a strip that's 50 by 4 centimeters wide. I'm going to use it as binding for the raw edges on the inside as well as making a tab. Now you can see the holes from the self edge, but they will be folded inside. The zipper that I'm using is about 20 centimeters, and I think you can go smaller, but I wouldn't go smaller than 15 centimeters. Mine looks a little bit gnarly, but I salvaged it from a pillowcase, so I'm just happy I can reuse it. You can use pins, but I like to use these little clips because I'm going to be working with quite a few layers. First up, we need to quilt the outer fabric and the bedding together. So first I'm going to mark the center of the outer fabric and then place it onto the wadding. The crease will be my guide for sewing the first row of stitches. To secure the fabric to the wadding, I'm going to sew a line of stitches at the top, as these are sort of basting stitches to keep everything together. I want to sew well in the seam allowance, so I'm sewing really close to the edge. And because the stitches will be visible in the end result, I'm going to turn up the stitch length a little bit. So instead of uh, sewing with a two and a half millimeter stitch length for the construction, I'm going to use a three millimeter stitch length for the top stitching and the quilting. As I'm going to sew all the stitch lines in one direction, so starting from the top, sewing to the bottom, I'm going to use a thread bunny to start and stop the stitching. Otherwise you would have like 20 thread tails hanging off of this small piece of fabric and it's just not fun to work with. At the end of each stitch line, I sew over the thread bunny and then cut my work loose and move on to the next stitch line. Now, this way you don't waste a lot of thread on the thread tails and you don't run the risk of unthreading your needle by cutting your thread too close to the needle. I'm not pinning the fabric. I'm not using anything to secure all the layers to each other other than the stitch line at the top. And what I am doing is I'm guiding the fabric through the sewing machine by evening it out. Now I've sped up the footage, but in reality I'm going much slower so I can take my time and even out the fabric. If you look at the fabric in front of the presser foot, you'll likely see a little ripple of fabric um, that's being pushed forward. What happens is that the top and outer fabric does stretch out a little bit, but because this is such a small piece, you won't really notice it in the end result. So you do want to do a last line of stitches, even though it's probably within the seam allowance, because having all those layers secured makes it easier to work with. Before I move on to sewing in the zipper, I'm going to remove all the pieces of wadding that are sticking out. When you place your zipper, you want to make sure that the right side or the outside of the zipper is facing the right side and the outside of the outer fabric. If you want, you can secure the outer fabric first, but I'm going to immediately place the lining on top and clip it into place with a few of the wonder clips. <laughs> 
Keep in mind that if your lining has a print, you want the print to be facing the back of the zipper. To secure the zipper, I'm going to stitch close to the zipper teeth, but not necessarily super close because you want the zipper teeth and a little bit of the zipper tape to be exposed. And the nice thing of sewing a zipper in this way when it's sticking out at the ends is that you don't have to move the slider out of the way and you can sew in one go. Next I'm going to press the lining and the outer fabric all to one side and then top stitch close to the edge of the outer fabric. Make sure you press from both sides, that way you can check if the fabric is folded nicely on the stitch line. Take a moment to decide on the settings of the needle position and how you want to align your foot to the edge of the fabric and also make sure you remember for the other side later on. I really like using the zipper foot for the top stitching because I can align the edge of the zipper foot to the edge of the outer fabric and I think it helps me sew an accurate line of top stitching. For the next step, fold the outer fabric towards the outside of the zipper and align with the edge of the zipper tape. And make sure the edges of the outer fabric are also aligned. Then fold the lining towards the inside of the zipper and also align with the edge of the zipper tape. You can secure everything with a pin or a few clips and then you're ready to sew the other side of the zipper. And then I switched my zipper foot to the other side and thought I was ready. However, I got stuck on one of the threads and I couldn't continue. So I looked at the stitches, they were fairly straight, so I didn't unpick anything. I decided to just keep it there and uh, keep on sewing. It's on the inside, so nobody's going to see it anyway. Even though I pinned everything in the beginning, once I remove a pin, I do look and adjust the fabric if necessary. As I'm sewing, you'll see that the lining is stretching out a little bit and I won't sew all the way over the lining. I'll just stop at the edge of the outer fabric. That way I can trim the lining later on. My zipper doesn't have a stopper at the end because I cut it out of an old pillowcase. I should have just stitched over the end at one side, but I put a little clip uh, to help prevent it from opening up. You can always replace the slider, but I just didn't want to uh, deal with that. If you chose a longer zipper, you'll have some more room to work with, but press the lining and the outer fabric away from the zipper teeth. Again, check both sides and press both sides and then stitch over the edge of the outer fabric. <laughs> 
And before we can close up the sides, we're going to uh, mark the center of the little pouch. Snip off a little point on each side. And that way you can place that little point on the center of the zipper teeth. Make sure you cut out a fairly shallow triangle because you want it well within the seam allowance. From the strip that I cut at the beginning, the 50 centimeter by 4 centimeter strip, I'm going to use that to cut up the binding now. So I need two pieces of binding and you want a piece of binding that's around an inch or three centimeters wider than uh, the edge of the pouch. In this case, I ended up using 18 centimeters by four centimeters. And then what was left is what I used for the tab. My piece ended up being 14 centimeters. If you want, you can make two tabs. I like to have just one loop at one end. And what I did is fold the piece of fabric in half and use the crease from pressing as a guide to fold in the raw edges. This way you don't have to measure anything while you're pressing and most of the time you get a pretty accurate result. Then fold the folded edges toward each other and then sew close to the edge. I switched back to my normal presser foot and because the piece of fabric is so tiny, I'm going to use the thread bunny again to get started. Because the strap is so narrow, it doesn't really fit over both feet dogs. So what I'm doing is I'm centering it over one of the feet dogs. So there is a good grip and it gets fed through the sewing machine. And then once I have that position, then I look at where I can um, position my sewing needle so that I'm close to the edge. To get a nice and straight line of stitching, what I do is I use my fingers to position the strap. And once it's in a good position, I simply hold my fingers still and let the machine do all the work. To make sure the loop stays in place while I close the side seam of the pouch, I do a couple of stitches over them to make sure they're nicely aligned. I'm going to place my little loop on the opening side of the zipper so that when I open the pouch I have something to grab onto. But before I pin everything closed, I'm also going to sew the zipper tape shut. Now the zipper teeth are sort of close. Move the zipper out of the way, grab your loop and do a couple of basting stitches over them. So you want to stitch close to the edge so that the uh, stitches are in the seam allowance. Once the little loop is attached in the seam line and centered on the zipper, it's time to close the sides. So you center the little notch on the zipper teeth on both sides, and then you can sew the sides closed. Make sure the zipper is open, but the slider isn't too close to the side seam. 
when I'm sewing with all these different layers, I find it nice to have a little bit more seam allowance than I normally would because then you have some margin of error. Otherwise you might miss one of the layers or elements that you're sewing into the side seam. finish the side seams first I'm going to trim them by about half so I'm going to go down to about six millimeters or um, a quarter inch it's really helpful to mark the cut line with a pencil that way you get a neat result and it's also easier to finish the side seam with the binding later on To finish the side seams off with binding, first I'm going to press them in half to mark uh, the center with a crease. Now you don't have to, you can just wrap it around, but it can be helpful if you have binding pieces that are just slightly shorter than you'd like to. When you wrap the binding around the seam allowance, make sure that the right side of the binding is facing inward so you are looking at the inside or the wrong side of the binding you can see one side is a little bit wonky but i'm ignoring that i cut out a little piece so the binding is just going straight remember those little holes from the self edge those are going to be inside the seam allowance once you've wrapped the seam allowances, you should see the inside or the wrong side of the fabric and the right side of the fabric should be facing the pouch. Now it might look a bit strange that we folded the edges of the binding around the edge of the pouch, but once we close the binding, it's going to be really helpful to tuck in the ends. When you attach the binding, you want to sew just inside the seam allowance, so right off the previous stitch line. And I do that by aiming for the stitch line with the gap in the presser foot, but I offset my needle position slightly inside the seam allowance. But even if you cross the seam line a little bit, it's going to be fine. Just try and sew as straight as you can. After sewing the binding, flip them over so that they are sticking out at both ends. Now you could just fold in the raw edges, but what I like to do is slightly pull in the top of the binding, press, and then fold it in. Now it does create a little bit of bulk, but before I close the binding, I'm going to sort of stuff it in there with a needle. You might notice a little gap between the raw edge of the binding and the raw edge of the pouch. This is to accommodate sort of the thickness of all the layers of wadding and fabric. When I'm folding over the binding, I want the folded edge to just touch the stitch line or go slightly over it. If you find it hard to reach the stitch line with the binding, it might be necessary to go back and trim some of the seam allowances of the pouch off. So the ends are tucked in nicely and this side is ready to sew. Instead of stuffing the little excess fabric in with a needle when I'm closing the binding, it also seems to help if I 
fold over the points of the binding and tuck them inside before I fold it over. But of course, feel free to use your own preferred method of attaching the binding. Uh, you know, what works for me might not work for you. I just really enjoy experimenting with uh, details like this and highly encourage you to do the same. There's no one way to do things in sewing and at least for me, this brings me so much joy. To secure the binding, I'm sewing on the open side and that way I can adjust if I need to. Do you want to sew as close to the folded edge as you can? This is the side I stitched from and this was the bottom. And as you can see, it's actually pretty even. And even if it wasn't, it's on the inside. So don't worry about it. Once the binding is done, I'm going to turn the bag right side out. And you could stop right here because it's already quite a cute little pouch. But in the next step, I'm going to box the corners. To give the bag a little boxy shape, we need to center the seam with the binding on the corners. To find the center, I use a uh, seam to press a crease into the fabric, but you can also use a pen to mark that center line, and then you can use a pin to check if the layers are actually aligned. Make sure you pin the binding away from the zipper. To give the bag the boxy shape, we need to do a stitch line that's about two centimeters away from the point of the pouch. And because that's a little bit hard to do, it's nice to mark those stitch lines. As I go around the bag, I keep checking with the pin if the binding seam is aligned with the corner, the center of the corner. And if I need to or can't see the crease anymore, I will finger press it in. Before I start sewing, I make sure that the binding is folded away from the zipper. Now because these corners are quite bulky, it can be useful to level out the presser foot with a thread bunny. Here I folded it in half. And another thing that you might do is switch out your needle for a thicker one. So the one that I'm sewing with is a 9014. 
since the corners are so small I'm not going to cut them off and finish them with binding it's probably going to be too many layers to work with comfortably and you can just tuck them inside the finished pouch 